welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Um, here we are uh, talking about the uh, supernatural, and we're in the middle of August. Um, good morning. Uh, and we're uh, I'm on a new uh, backdrop again with uh, my studio <laughs> is is actually the lake house up in New Hampshire uh, that we're. I think you should have turned us toward the lake so that we could have yeah. enjoyed seeing <laughs> that view. <laughs> yeah. Not that we don't love the microwave and the food basket. Right. But right, the right. view of the lake would be very nice. <laughs> the lake is beautiful. Um, we have a great, great boat and uh, got to enjoy the sunsets and the beauty of it. And um, we actually had a, um, you know, we talk about the supernatural is God at work in unnatural, mm. un unnatural ways that um, we recognize is, you know, God at work oh, um, yeah. and that is supernatural. And so um, we've been here now a week or so. And uh, last week uh, there were some pretty heavy thunderstorms. Oh yeah, uh, which is not normal for up here, by the way. Yeah, and it was um, at the lake here. Uh, it was you know heavy lightning, thunder, mm -hmm. and heavy rain. Right. Um, and so it was kind of going on during uh, one of the days. So we were you know we were not on the lake obviously, and uh, just you know enjoying other things. And uh, so we, uh, Joel and Christina Gunn were visiting us, and. Um, Oh, how fun. Uh, Scott and Kristen uh, Cornell, who actually have the house uh, next door. Mm -hmm. So we were all uh, gathering uh, after dinner at night. Um, so it's dark, getting dark um, on our porch. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just, you know, having conversation. And all of a sudden, uh, the light um, uh, from... Um, uh, the boat flashes, um, and it's it's a, a at night you have a light that sticks up with a white white light that would show people you're coming. Well, it starts flashing, mm -hmm. and it was like, hey, wait a minute, um, <laughs> because uh, when I I uh, took the boat, the um, people that that rented me the boat said, now remember. When you dock the boat, uh, turn all the electric switches off mm. because it'll it'll keep running the battery, and you don't want to keep running the battery. So make sure right. that you make sure you turn all the electric switches off, and then nothing will work on the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's flashing, and and my, our first thought is, uh oh, um, must have left something on. <laughs> uh, we we must have left something on, and we got to go take care of that. So Joel gets up. Uh, and said, hey, I'll go, I'll go take care of it. Um, so he starts walking out to the boat mm -hmm. uh, on the dock and it stops. Right. He said, oh, I guess it I guess it stopped. And he starts walking back. I said, well, wait, no, wait a minute. Um, go back out there and make sure the switches are off. Uh, OK, well, he goes back out there and he looks on the on the thing. And the switches were completely off, which meant there's no possibility that the light could be functioning. Hmm. Um, but as he's out there, uh, he said, nope, uh, everything's off. Uh, uh, the light should not be <laughs> should not be functioning. But he said, hey, by the way, your top is so full of water, it's about ready to collapse. Mm. Um, and so I'm going to, interesting. I, I'm going to, I'm going to go, you know, take care of that, which we, we watched him do it. You know, he took all the, got all the water off this and it's a canvas top. Um, and he got all the water off. Um, and then he comes back in and, you know, and I said, well, so those switches were off. He said, yeah, all the switches were off. I said, well, then <laughs> there's no battery power and there's no ability for that light to flash. Right. 
but it flashed. Right. Um, and we all recognized, oh my gosh, look at that. Um, that, that is a, um, supernatural work of God that needed to alert us mm -hmm. that you got a, you got a problem here. You were about to have a problem on the boat. Yeah. And you would have had that canvas top collapse on you, um, that you needed to take care of, you know? And, and so we, and we all, we all were praising God and, and saying, man, how amazing is that, that even something like that could happen when it's not possible, but it could happen. Right. Uh, right. What you just described is the perfect example of a quote that I wanted to share today anyway. So um, it comes from the book, Wholehearted, um, Tending Your Heart by Being Discipled by Jesus, one of my favorite books. But listen to this quote, because it's what you're talking about. While there will be many times when the Holy Spirit within will prompt us to stop and ask him questions or just listen to him, the fact remains that as we learn to stay yielded and attentive to the Spirit, he will faithfully reveal himself and lead us, and we will find ourselves responding to him, often living supernatural lives quite unconsciously. Hmm. You know, not looking for the supernatural, yet walking in it and then recognizing because the Holy Spirit prompted you to go check that and then recognizing his supernatural right in the midst of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's um, uh, get into it a little bit. Uh, we are talking about, again, uh, supernatural work of God, as we've just described it. Uh, it's it's any time and all the time that he wants to uh, act, and we know that he was acting, and we could see, you know, and even in that situation with the light, was that, well, it wasn't, you know, happenstance or, you know, it just so happened that it was flashing. It it really wasn't able to flash with the way that the circuits are set up. Right. But he can make it happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. It's so cool. So it's, it is cool. Um, and we're talking about how do we put ourselves in a position to be able to experience it? So um, he said, don't seek the sign itself mm -hmm. because then you lose the flow through of the relationship of what I want to do in your life to draw me uh, into me as a, as a person to him uh, and to have experiencing his supernatural work, but it's a flow through of his work in my life as I'm walking with him in, in the kingdom of God. Um, and so we're talking about not a system, but rather mm -hmm. uh, what are ways that that we can learn how to walk with him and experience the supernatural. So uh, we've talked through a, ser a series of these, and now we're in Luke, uh, Luke chapter 4, 31 to 37. Sure. Luke 4, 31 to 37. Then he went down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Yeah. Uh, so um, this one's interesting. Um uh, he was in uh, Capernaum, which is on the Sea of Galilee. And this is, uh, remember, this is where uh, Peter lived and the fishermen, you know, uh, were there. Um, and in verse 31, what was Jesus doing? It says he was teaching them. Yeah, he's, um, he is uh, on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. Um, he's in the synagogue mm -hmm. uh, taking uh, scripture and teaching truth about it. Um, mm. And uh, again, the way that when he says he was teaching them, um, we would interpret it in America anyway, as he was preaching to them. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, because he's in a church, kind of a church gathering. Uh, there's there's people there. Right. Um, and um, we we would interpret it as, well, he's given a sermon, you know, to the people in the uh, uh, congregation, so to speak. Well, it's not how he did it. He, he taught by what's called uh, a didactic or uh, dialoguing process of asking questions, getting responses, mm-hmm. making statements, letting them respond to those statements. So it was more of a, a larger group discussion than it was a sermon. It really wasn't, mm-hmm. a, it really wasn't a sermon. Um, so this is a picture of abiding right is he's going to re- reveal truth through the word uh, we're going to ask questions he's going to ask questions we're going to dialogue what does that mean how does that respond what do you think about that and it's a back and forth uh processing um and then um in verse 32 their response to that was what they were astonished at the authority that he taught with yeah uh, that um, there was a more than a uh, interesting piece of information. Mm-hmm. Um, it was there was authority that they could sense that the truth of this, the power of this, the reality of this was so, and they were astonished and amazed at the difference that he brought versus everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and they noticed it. Right. Uh, like, wow, this is, I want to, I want to experience more of that uh, relationship in the word and the power of the word and the truth of the word from the source, mm-hmm. which they began to, you know, recognize. Um, so abiding is getting into the word, um, uh, letting God speak to us, dialoguing with him. And, and we have in the same response is that we get amazed and, and astonished uh, over the things that he's showing us and the uh, power and the authority that he's showing us. Okay, now while he's doing that, in verse 33, what happens? It says, uh, while he's doing it, uh, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon and he cried out with a loud voice. Yeah. Okay, so um, while he was, he was in essence, we were abiding in him, mm-hmm. something, something happens. Um, a situation happens. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't external, see, to that, to that place. And it wasn't like, well, they finished that abiding and then they went out and did something. Mm-hmm. While they're doing that, something happens, right? Um, and uh, and and Jesus uh, then uh, basically uh, rebukes him, um, and the demon comes out of them, uh, and he's back to the kid. The person's back to normal because Jesus supernaturally took the situation that happened during the the moment of abiding and uh, took care of it. And then in verse 36, what did, what did they say? It says, then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves saying, what a word this is for with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. Yeah. So that uh, they were amazed at the teaching with authority. And now they see the reality of it. Mm. that oh that's cool uh wow um it wasn't hypothetical Mm -hmm. it was they saw it in action right there they saw it in action and that authority and power which was coming from my abiding now is starting to be demonstrated as i'm i as i'm living that out Mm -hmm. and it'll pop up with something that'll happen and jesus will then demonstrate the truth of that in a supernatural way. Um, And now you understand that the truth of what he said and the truth of who he is and the truth of what he does are all the same. Um, That's awesome. And then we get excited because they were excited about, about it. And 
it said that's what stimulated their reporting it hmm. around around the region was the power of that supernatural that um, uh, wasn't uh, because of just the word. It, it was it started in the word, mm -hmm. but it was the reality of the experience of that uh, situation. That's so cool. I have never, like as many times as I have read that passage, I've focused on the miracle that took place there and never recognized that it was right in the middle of a teaching and how God used it to actually put an exclamation point on the teaching. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know, that's beautiful. Yeah. And so that as you're abiding, as you're, uh, you know, seeking uh, truth, um, is God will uh, start to show you things that, well, here's what I'm speak that I want you to understand has authority behind it. And then I'm gonna demonstrate this in a real situation in your particular life that comes mm -hmm. out of your life while you're processing that, see? Um, mm. And you're starting to look for, um, okay, how does this apply to my life? How does mm -hmm. this, translate into your promises that you can work and act and fulfill, uh, you know, while, while I'm going through it, uh, from mm -hmm. the, from the words that I'm beginning to spend time in and, and understand it, uh, you know, of what, of what God is showing and what God is doing that, o that only he can do. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really remarkable as you then start to see that, you know, played out mm -hmm. um, and you recognize, you know, the supernatural, you know, work of God, you know, as you're in relationship to God, you know, just like with your, you know, your kids, you know, that, that were considering buying a house, looking for a house. Well, they're in the word, processing the word, abiding in the word. And then um, a situation shows up with an opportunity that fits exactly what God is up to and then moves them mm -hmm. through all that. To where only only he can do that you know and right, and, and right. they and they would bear witness that it wasn't just we just asked god to do it we were abiding with him mm -hmm. and out of that came the supernatural work that he did so fun yeah i love that that is that is such a fresh way to look at that passage that i had never considered and uh that's a beautiful beautiful example and we see that right day in day out as we walk with him we see we experience that. So I think we can definitely bear witness to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so what that does is, uh, you know, when we talk about, well, putting, being put in a place where we can experience it, one of the, one of the key ways is that um, we are faithful in our abiding uh, in mm -hmm. the word and abiding in the relationship uh, of what do you say to me? What are you saying to me? Uh, mm -hmm. starting to receive that, process it, uh, understand it, ask questions, dialogue about it. And then the neat thing is, is that, uh, you know, God will then um, deliver uh, the, a supernatural work to basically mm -hmm. show you why this is true and there because there's power mm -hmm. and authority you know behind it and i have a, I have a great example um we did a retreat um in colorado and um a woman um she was very sad you could tell very very heavily burdened i mean she came in mm -hmm. with just no smile on her face and and she was up she was really uptight and really upset and anxious um pretty quiet, you know, during the weekend. Uh, but she, you know, she was abiding and she was listening and she was processing and we got into a discussion on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, and she got really interested in that discussion and, and she, you know, she went into the word right. and she talked more about it and uh, she didn't really give any personal examples other than asking questions. What about, what about, what about? And she by the way, she was divorced uh, she did say she was divorced and that her relationship with her ex-husband was not good. That's, that's mm -hmm. all, that's all she said, you know, and we just talked right. about, about forgiving everybody, no matter what, you know, and, and don't worry about reconciliation and, and that's kind of stuff. So, um, and she spent more time on that. We could tell, um, 
So Sunday, she um, goes through our Ezekiel exercise, which is God speaking to mm-hmm. her. And God speaks to her about forgiveness. Right. Um, and uh, that I want to show you that, you know, I, I can deliver you freedom if you have a heart to go to forgiveness and I'll give you forgiveness, you know. And so she shared that. Uh, she didn't get into a lot of specifics about it other than it has it has a lot to do with her ex-husband. And she's working through that. And we just said, you know, continue to stay with it uh, because, and this is what the abiding is all about, is you stay with it until you experience it. Mm-hmm. And you don't learn about forgiveness. You actually experience forgiveness. Right. And, and the power of the word, the authority of the word comes and gives you that amazing thing. And God will do supernatural stuff to have you experience it. And that's why, by the way, when we talk about abiding, we, uh, we, we try to help everybody understand this. It's not, it's not quantity, how many verses you can get through. Mm. Um, it's, it's staying in that place until you experience God's work of that particular thing Mm -hmm. in in your life and don't leave it too, too quickly. Um, Right. So, uh, you know, we go to lunch uh, and, and everybody's sharing, you know, uh, Hey, what, how did it go? And, and, you know, what, what, what really meant to you? And, um, and she makes this make a comment. She says, I I think I'm really understanding uh, forgiveness, particularly toward my ex-husband. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to, I really understood something here and I'm going to keep staying with it. Um, And, um, and then she says, Hey, I got, Oh, I forgot. Uh, she was from uh, Midwest. I got to get, I got to go. I got to catch a plane. Uh, okay. Um, as she's standing up and she says, oh, by the way, um, I never shared this, but um, my, hu- my ex-husband took my daughter away from me when, I, when she was three years old. And I've, I haven't seen her since. Um, and I don't even know, uh, I know she lives here in Denver. I said, Denver, I said, well, don't you want to stay and, you know, maybe see if we can contact her? And said, no, no, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Um, and she just lays this out as she's leaving. Wow. Uh, uh, this is a scenario. And, and I, and, and so I said, well, before you go, let me pray, you know, father, would you do your work, uh, to bring about relationship back with her daughter? through her willingness to forgive her, her ex-husband. Uh, cause that was the first step. Um, right. okay. Um, so she leaves and we're, and we're like, man, I wish you would have said that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cause we might've, might've helped her, you know, reconnect. Um, so, um, she gets on the plane, uh, goes home. Uh, she calls me the next day about, about noon. She says, well, you will not believe what happened. What? She said, um, I spent time in the word on the way home about this forgiveness. And God mm-hmm. showed me on the same basis I've been forgiven, I need to forgive my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll have to process further. Okay, what does that mean You know, for reconciliation, particularly with my daughter? Um, and so I did. And, and I think God gave me that forgiveness and I released it from that heaviness, and <laughs> she says, this morning, my daughter calls me. She didn't initiate anything. This was her daughter calling. Daughter so called cool. her out of, she said, the first time I've heard her voice since she was three years old. Mm. She calls me and says, hey, mom, I want, I want you to know something. Um, I just uh, recently became a believer in Christ. Now she doesn't know uh, anything about her mom uh, wow. of what, of where she's at. She just said, I became a believer in Christ and he's asked me to call you so that we could have a, uh, we could re reestablish our relationship. Would you, would you be willing to oh, do that? That is so beautiful. <laughs> that is so only God, only God could do that. Right. Uh, you know, so how remarkable is that, that, um, that supernatural thing. And, mm-hmm. and it, it was a great example of, I'm trying to lead you into some truth. 
Mm -hmm. There's a step for you to take, which he took. Right. And then watch what I'm about ready to do that. And, and we all, you know, she knew and we all knew. How is that even possible? You know, uh, well, and even as I'm listening to that, I think there's such an important element there to see for people. She took a step of obedience that yeah. he called her to yeah. as she was just beginning to abide. It wasn't like, wait till this is all done and you've fixed all this and I've healed you from all this and then you'll see something right in that first step. He begins to meet her in who he is and in yeah. the supernatural and gives her honestly that confirmation and affirmation she needs to keep going. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. So, um, uh, uh, let's, um, uh, you know, pray about that and thank God for that. But, you know, father, you say that as we're abiding, uh, the authority and power is going to be known by that alone. And then you'll demonstrate it in supernatural things to help us experience what you just said. So we praise you and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. That is such a fresh take. I want to spend more time on that passage. Um, I just feel like there's more to dig into there. Um, but thank you for sharing that. If this brought questions up to you, be sure to send them in at questions at afjministry.com. We'd love to talk about it and we will see you next time. Yep. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.